How's everyone doing? Welcome to another episode of What Didn't Make the Shelf. This is a video series where I'm going to show you movies that I'm getting rid of from my collection that aren't going to make the bookcase or shelf. I got this uh, video concept idea from Joe and Marie from Martinez Joe 74 Definitely check out their channel. Really nice people. Amazing collection. Uh, I did a video series somewhat similar years ago, but it was more of an opinion-based one. It's called Keep or Toss. I would ask your guys' opinion. And I'm thinking now, like, if I'm debating about it, I should just get rid of it. Uh, my collection is crazy. Uh, I've sold over 10,000 movies in, like, the past five years. And I still have over 6,000 now. And you can only rewatch so many movies in a lifetime. So I really want to cut it down to, like, 2,500, if possible. I know that seems... It, I've had an impasse. It seems crazy to me, especially have selling that many and still having so many. I try to rationalize keeping certain things, uh, you know, certain movies for certain reasons. I like this director, I like this actor, I like this scene, you know, something like that. But uh, I've got to uh, make room. There's no room. I've got, you know, you see the two bookcases right there, but I've got I think, 13 total bookcases and then stacks all around me too. So let's go ahead and get into it. I've got 10 Blu-rays that didn't make the shelf. All uh, right, let's go ahead and uh, get into it. And let me know if you've seen these movies and what you think of them. Uh, maybe you like some of these movies. I think that's a you know a thing too. I enjoy hearing differing opinions. Sometimes when I would see uh, Joe Marie, I show some ones. There's a couple ones that I enjoyed that they had. So um, I like the you know differing opinions. Uh, that's kind of what I'm on here for too. The interaction. I like to hear you know what you guys think, even if it's different from my own. We can respect differing opinions. That's a thing. Um, some of these ones though are ones that are ones I'm just getting rid of for upgrades. I know Joe actually recently did his duplicates video. Uh, where all he shows all the you know uh, duplicates in his collection, and I have a bunch, but he has a ton. Uh, but I'm going to get rid of some of mine. Uh, but first up, let's go ahead and get into the War of the Worlds. Actually, even before I even start, uh, I know in my last video I had a bunch of people message me on Instagram and stuff asking if you know some of these were available to buy. Uh, I had already sold a few of the ones from that one, uh, my previous video at that point. But all these ones are available if you're interested. So let me know. Uh, first up is the Criterion Collection Blu-ray for War of the Worlds. This is the original 1953 one. Um, to me, I never saw this one initially. I actually highly prefer the Steven Spielberg remake with Tom Cruise. I know a lot of people don't. Um, for me, though, this one just is so dated. The effects, people like rave about the effects. I was reading reviews after I watched it. People were saying the effects stand the test of time. No, they don't. You can see like strings holding up some of the models. It's just... It's, it's dated. It's so dated for the effects. Uh, the one thing that stood out for me that I really enjoyed, though, uh, was the look to the aliens. You, it's only a brief, you see them just for a, a moment, but I really like that look. Um, I don't know, I just wanted more from this. I like uh, 50s sci-fi, you know, Cold War era, stuff like that. This one, to me, like, I, I highly prefer, you know, Forbidden Planet, uh, even, you know, Time Machine. Like, there's so many other ones I would highly prefer over this one. Um, and I just feel like the effects really, that's the, the big draw for this. It was all about the effects. And to me, they just seem so dated. So that was like the, the biggest thing. I know um, uh, Byron Haskin worked a lot in the special effects. So did I, you know, producer uh, George Powell as directed by Byron Haskin. So uh, I know he was nominated for a bunch of Academy Awards, Byron Haskin for uh, the special effects and stuff like that. Um, George Powell, uh, that's what, you know, he's known for that as well. Uh, there's some imaginative, you know, designs here but they just don't really come to fruition and it's based off of hg wells uh classic right there and of course you know the orson wells uh you know it's just it's very well known and there's so many uh iterations and takes of this uh but for me uh the steven spielberg one is the best one uh i know i feel like i'm in the minority in saying that because i feel like people crap on it. people love to hate on tom cruise People love to hate on Steven Spielberg, you know, the sentimental, uh, sentimental aspect of it uh, and a lot of his movies, which I get, I understand, but sometimes you need that and it doesn't have to be to a schmaltzy level. And Tom Cruise to me, I think, is one of the best action stars. Um, I, I don't understand if people put him down for his Scientology beliefs. I don't really care about that. That doesn't affect me in any way. And if you look at all the different actors and directors who have done terrible, awful things, I, I blows my mind. And Tom Cruise, look at his filmography. So many amazing films. Um, but yeah, it, to me, that one is an all-time classic. And uh, I highly prefer that one over this one. Uh, to me, yeah, again, this was dated. The effects and the effects were like the big draw here. Um, you know, you get that, that Technicolor and a lot of the visuals. But it was a little rough for me. And I'm going to purge it from the collection. I got this off of Amazon uh, not that long ago. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to rewatch this one. 
Uh, but I know a lot of people were raving about it. a ton of special features on here. Criterion Collection always does a beautiful release with their films. So, you know, you got the booklet and stuff in there um, and some interior artwork. But yeah, that's one uh, I'm going to get rid of from the collection. Let me know what your favorite sci-fi movie of all time is. Uh, next up, there's a few ones right here that are ones I'm just purging from the collection because uh, I like the films, but I've, I'm either going to upgrade them or I have another edition. For instance, Roger Rabbit, the 25th anniversary Blu-ray. I want to pick up the 4K. Last I saw it was going for 15 bucks for the 4K. So um, I think that's pretty much what I paid for this Blu-ray. But, you know, uh, I'm going to pick up the, the 4K for it. Uh, a, a classic. I remember there's certain scenes when I was a kid that like, kind of freaked me out. But uh, I love the heck out of this one. Uh, Robert Zemeckis uh, and, you know, Bob Haskins in here. And just it's a classic for me and this is you know steven spielberg presents you know he's involved as a you know producer in so many different films as well um and he's had his hands involved in creative ideas and for films for so long but i love the heck out of this film uh jessica rabbit all the different you know uh, christopher lloyd frightening in here a bit too uh but i love this one uh i'm not getting rid of this one because i don't like it i'm getting rid of it because i want to get the 4k for it Next up is The Revenant, which I picked up the 4K for. So this one is an all-time classic. I love movies in a snowy setting. For me, I consider this a modern masterpiece. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio deserves so many more Academy Awards, in my opinion. Let me know what your favorite Leonardo DiCaprio movie is. Uh, but yeah, this one I is just riveting and uh, a great tale of uh, vengeance. And uh, nominated for, uh, actually it won, uh, based on true events, but won three Oscars. Um, to me, I love the heck out of this great performance as Hugh Glass here, uh, Tom Hardy, the whole supporting cast, but um, amazing. It just again, the wintry effects and just the brutality too. It just felt like, you know, watching this, I, I, I feel like I got to put a blanket over me. I'm just getting cold watching it, but tremendous performances here. And uh, got the 4K just recently during Black Friday, which I haven't done my video for that yet. So look forward to that. Don't be surprised when you see it. Next up is Outsiders, the complete novel. Uh, I love the heck out of this one, but I got the 4K. In fact, I ended up getting two 4Ks, so if anybody's interested in the Blu-ray and the 4K, let me know. Um, no digital copy, though, uh, for this one. Includes the theatrical version in here, too. But I'm a big fan of this one and the cast in here. Tom Cruise, uh, C. Thomas Howell, Matt, uh, Matt Dillon, Diane Lane, Ralph Macchio, Rob Lowe, Patrick Swayze, Emilio Estevez, Leif Garrett, um, just uh, an incredible film and, you know, kind of showing classism a bit as well. And, you know, the wrong side of the tracks. Um, but yeah, the Soches and, uh, you know, the Greasers and it's just, uh, I don't know. I feel like it was really great performance this year. And there was, uh, I feel like in the, they changed the music a bit, right? In, uh, the complete novel one, uh, versus the theatrical one, but I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I think I remember hearing some people complaining about that, but I think it still worked well. Francis uh, Ford Coppola film classic. Let me know what your favorite Francis Ford Coppola movie is. But yeah, I've got one of each of these ones, the 4K and the Blu-ray. <clears throat> people ask me, how do you, why do you get duplicates and stuff like that? Sometimes I'll pick up deals from local sellers. Uh, the market's kind of dried up now, but you know, if I can get a stack of movies and they have it pre-priced for a great deal where I can make some money off of it, or, you know, have something for a really good trade bait, um, I will pick it up uh, if it has duplicates in it. I remember there was somebody who was uh, constantly selling stuff and they would have like, you know, two things or three things of this one movie in there, but if it's a new release that I can, you know, flip, why the heck, why wouldn't I pick it up for a great deal? Um, next up is Mad Max Fury Road 3D. Um, I ended up getting the 4K set. Uh, there were some audio issues on uh, the recent 4K Mad Max set. I've seen so many unboxings on here and I never saw anybody talk about those audio issues. Uh, they got actually pulled from the shelves for a bit. I remember that people were like jacking up the prices for them. Um, but yeah, I, it didn't affect Fury Road. It affected, I want to say Thunderdome. And I don't know if it was, um, I, I, I think it might have just, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I got to look that up. And sometimes these audio issues or, you know, some of the issues that people uh, have these, uh, you know, recalls for and stuff like that. And disc replacement programs are so minute. They're like a second. Sometimes it's like off screen audio. Uh, out of sync for like a you know brief millisecond it's it's crazy to me I don't even know how some people recognize that but to each their own I enjoyed this one although I feel like it should have been called uh, Furiosa because Mad Max is almost like a tertiary character in this one but uh I do like uh Tom Hardy a lot as an actor but I don't like him in Venom or uh 
the recent, uh, you know, the Venom, Let There Be Carnage one too. I just, his performance, his, uh, the delivery of his lines, the accent, just all of it, it just feels awkward. It doesn't feel natural. It feels weird. And uh, I feel like that's the biggest detriment for those films is Tom Hardy. And he's a great actor. So I don't know. It just doesn't work for Venom uh, or Eddie Brock. Uh, I feel like he definitely has, uh, you know, the look for Eddie Brock way more so than Topher Grace. Uh, but <laughs> Spider-Man 3. But yeah, I don't know. I'm a big fan, uh, but I just don't like him in those ones. But um, again, I, I enjoy this movie, but again, I felt like he was a tertiary character in it. Um, next up is Lonesome Dove. Uh, this is a classic Western miniseries, but I have the Steelbook now. Uh, amazing cast in here. Um, just an all-time classic. Uh, Westerns, I didn't used to love them growing up as a kid, but now it's become one of my favorite genres. Horror by far, number one, then sci-fi, then Westerns, uh, number three. But uh, we've got Tommy Lee Jones, Danny Glover, Diane Lane, Robert Duvall, uh, a bunch of other, D.B. Sweeney, uh, a bunch of other recognizable people in here. Ricky Schroeder as well, Angelica Houston. Uh, but yeah, I love this one. So I got the, the Steelbook for it. I don't need to keep the regular Blu-ray. Uh, although I'm kind of picky, like when it comes to Steelbooks, I don't get, I used to get so many, but now I don't get uh, as many. Uh, but they're doing so many great jobs with the Steelbooks that it's kind of hard to say no, especially like, you know, Mill Creek's been doing it for a while with that protective uh, slip cover. But now I see Lionsgate doing it and they're doing it with really cool like imagery where you pull off the plastic slip, uh, slip cover and it reveals a different image underneath. I think that's really neat. Uh, Mondo had been doing that for a long time too, but it's funny. I always hear people, you know, raving about the Lionsgate ones, but you don't hear people giving the praise for Mill Creek who'd been doing it for a while already. Um, but yeah, there's the artwork too. Um, so many amazing steelbooks coming out. It's kind of hard to say no. I was trying to get away from steelbooks for a long time and now I'm, they're, they're pulling me back in. Um, next up is uh, Teachers. This is directed by Arthur Hiller, who uh, directed the movie uh, The Hospital with George C. Scott. Big fan of him as a director. He worked with um, Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder in a couple movies, Silver Streak, See No Evil, Hear No Evil. Uh, he did the movie Love Story, which I feel like is one of the most overrated romance movies of all time. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of that one, but uh, he directed uh, The In-Laws. Uh, he directed a few other, uh, The Babe uh, as well. So with John, uh, John Goodman, uh, but yeah, that one, uh, is another one where I feel like it didn't live up to my memory of it, uh, the babe. So, uh, that one's going to get purged from the collection too. Actually, I might, I don't know if I already got rid of that one or not. I, I have piles all over here, things I want to do updates for and stuff like that, but that's not in this pile. But yeah, that was one I remember liking a lot as a kid. Beautiful release though, uh, from Mill Creek, the slip cover on that one has like a glossy slip cover. I love where uh, Mill Creek does those retro VHS slipcovers too. Uh, but I digress. I really like Arthur Hiller as a director. And I like this movie, but I just don't know if I'm going to rewatch it. I like the cast a lot here. Nick Nolte, Joe Beth Williams, Judd Hirsch, Ralph Macchio is in here too. Doesn't have his name on the back for some reason. I mean, the Karate Kid, uh, I feel like his name should be front and center on here too. He's a big part of this movie. But Nick Nolte is a teacher and he's kind of burned out. And he's also dealing with a lawsuit. He uh, pushed a student through, uh, gave him a diploma and passed him, even though the kid couldn't read. Uh, and then, um, you know, it was illiterate. And so they filed uh, a loss, you know, a lawsuit against him. And then um, the lawyer is used to be his star pupil, played by uh, Joe Beth Williams. Um, so, you know, at that time, you know, she, he still had the love for teaching, the passion for it. And now she can see that he's totally burned out and just doesn't care quite as much and just going through the motions. Ralph Macchio is a student in here, too. Um, and Laura Dern's in here, uh, a few other recognizable people. But yeah, I feel like it was a good movie, but I just don't know if I'm going to rewatch it again. Um, I liked a lot of the performances here, especially from Nick Nolte and Ralph Macchio uh, and Joe Beth Williams. But yeah, I, enjoyable. I like the director a lot. I like a lot of the performances, but if I can't see myself rewatching again. It's time to get rid of it. Next up is one that I thought was super overrated, Moneyball. Jonah Hill got nominated for an Oscar for his performance here. Same year, Melissa McCarthy got nominated for an Oscar uh, for uh, Bridesmaids, which both of those straight trash nominations, in my opinion. I am not a fan of Melissa McCarthy. Jonah Hill, I think, is actually a much better actor uh, than people give him credit for. I really loved him in War Dogs. He can do other stuff outside of comedic, uh, the realm. And, you know, his performance was okay here, but it wasn't Oscar Award nominee worthy. Uh, and Melissa McCarthy, too. I feel like that year just blew me away when I saw some of the nominations. I was like, ugh. 
the heck, who, what is, what's going on with the Academy on that one? But uh, this is all about Billy Bean and, you know, sabermetrics and changing the way that people thought about baseball. And you know, he started out as, uh, you know, shows him actually, uh, you know, as a, a talent. Uh, and then he didn't live up to the talent. And then, you know, the scouts and then, you know, doing the number crunching um, and, you know, very well-known story in baseball. But to me, I feel like it just doesn't fully work here uh, in this film. I, everybody loved this movie. I was not one that enjoyed it quite as much. It didn't resonate with me. I kept it because I was like, maybe I'm going to rewatch and give it another chance. Um, and I just don't think it's worth it for me. It's stylistic. I like Brad Pitt a lot and uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. I think they, they were really the stars here. Um, but there's some other recognizable uh, supporting cast that did a good job here. Uh, this is directed by uh, Bennett Miller, who also uh, directed Capote with uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Fantastic film. And then Foxcatcher, too. Uh, a lot of crazy DuPont movies out there. Uh, but he does a lot of good, almost like, you know, biopic drama kind of movies uh, based on true stories. I don't, you, know, you consider, you know, it's about Billy Bean, but it's also about, you know, what he did with, uh, you know, the money ball and the sabermetrics and things like that, changing the way that the game uh, was done at that point with, you know, limited budget and the team, the Oakland A's. And uh, yeah, I don't know. For me, it just didn't fully work. Uh, I would have rather watch a documentary on this, but than a, uh, you know, a big Hollywood budget take on it. But I, I get a lot of love. People are big fans of this one. For me, I wasn't a big fan. I just kept it because I was like, maybe I'm going to rewatch it, give it another chance. And I just don't think it didn't interest me enough to sit through it again. Um, let me know what your favorite sports movie of all time is. I know some people actually picked this as their favorite sports movie. To each their own. To me, this, you know, wouldn't make my top 100 probably. <laughs> um but, you know, there's so many great sports movies out there that still need Blu-ray releases. Above the Rim, you know, if you're a basketball fan, you'll definitely appreciate that one. I'm surprised that one doesn't have a Blu-ray release. Um, but uh, there is one with Don Cheadle in it. Um, the Legend of uh, Rebound, The Legend of Earl the Goat Manigault. That movie is a classic. I love Don Cheadle. If you're a Don Cheadle fan, besides Devil in a Blue Dress, you know, you think of that performance there. You think of some of other films. But he is so good in... Uh, uh, rebound, uh, Legend of the Earl, the Goat, Manigault. Um, and how does that not have a Blu-ray release? I don't know. It's crazy to me. Uh, but there's so many other great sports movies that deserve Blu-ray releases that still don't have them. Uh, but yeah, and you know, speaking of, I was uh, talking about before too, just popped into my mind for uh, Tom Cruise getting the hate. There's a film that I feel like is super underrated from him, a uh, Michael Mann film called Collateral. Uh, and he has so many amazing performances. But if you're not a Tom Cruise fan, watch Collateral. I feel like that is a movie that could possibly change your mind. Um, sometimes my mind is working a mile a minute. It just popped in my head. I was thinking about earlier. I was like, I'm, I, you know, different uh, movies that he was in. Uh, he's, again, his filmography is so amazing to me. I've been a fan since I was a kid. So many great movies. Uh, Vanilla Sky is one of my all-time favorite movies as well. I actually want to pick up the Paramount Presents recent Blu-ray for that one. Um, I haven't done that yet, but I plan to. And I'm going to keep the previous Blu-ray for that one because that's one that's like an all-time favorite that I'll keep multiple editions of. I have my old, you know, DVD of it. I've got my uh, the previous Blu-ray for it, and I definitely will pick up the Paramount Presents Blu-ray too. But then the last and not least is Mortal Kombat Legacy. I remember seeing this on like YouTube. Uh, it was it, That's one of the things. On this one, it's like the episodic ones were at, at the end of like every 10 minutes or something like that. Yeah, it's uh, nine episodes here. And at the end of each one, it's like the credits and they roll to the next one. Uh, there's some good creative ideas. Uh, there's some actually good kills and stuff here too. Like when Kano gets his, you know, punched and the eye pops out, that shocked me. I still remember that. But uh, a lot of it though, just feels like it, it doesn't fully come to fruition. It isn't as cohesive. Um, I don't know if they did more. Uh, this is like the first season. I don't know if they did more of it. And it's crazy to me that this was, uh, I want to say it was 2011. Uh, yeah, 2011. So 10 years ago. And my, I didn't think it was that long ago, but I feel like there's some great ideas here. Um, it, I don't know. I just wanted a bit more from it, especially the Raiden uh, episode. I, I did not care for that one, uh, but uh, I like that they're taking some, you know, the mythology here and changing it up. And uh, I just feel like it could have done more with it. And it was interesting to see on YouTube. Uh, but for this one, I didn't. I feel like it should have just been fluid it, you know instead of the episodes like that but you see it kind of takes you out of it you, you get the recap on each beginning of the episodes and then you get you know the the credits at the end uh just let it go you know fluidly through um but it, it doesn't mesh well as a series for me and uh it's i like some actually you see michael jai white right there excellent there's a few of the recognizable people in here too but um michael jai white was actually a great action star he deserves to be in more movies too 
I feel like everybody thinks of him from Spawn, but he's in, in so many other films. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I wanted more from this one overall, and I think it's one that I'm not going to revisit. Uh, again, I like some of the characters and some of the mythology here, um, especially seeing, you know, uh, Sindel and uh, those kind of characters. Uh, but, you know, some of the ones you don't see quite as much in uh, some of these uh, takes on it. Uh, but I, you know, Annihilation, that Mortal Kombat movie is probably one of the worst video game adaptation movies, along with Double Dragon and Street Fighter. That Street Fighter steelbook for Mill Creek recently, beautiful, one of the best looking steelbooks ever. But the movie is a dumpster fire of a movie. People love that movie, it blows my mind. I'm like, what? For nostalgia purposes, if you watched it as a kid, maybe you could appreciate it, but it just doesn't hold up. And I remember watching that when I was a kid and liking it, just watching it now, I was like, ugh. Um, but yeah, for let me know what your favorite video game adapted movie is. Uh, you know, I think of Resident Evil, Silent Hill. Those are like some of the top ones up there for me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's been some terrible... Uh, the first Mortal Kombat movie I enjoyed. The recent Mortal Kombat movie I enjoyed. And some of the animated Mortal Kombat movies have been really good. The Scorpion's Revenge especially. Check that one out. I give that one a high recommendation. Um, they might be actually better some, than some of the live action ones. But I think some of the worst ones that come to mind, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, Double Dragon, Street Fighter, even the Super Mario Brothers one I think is better than those ones. But... Uh, Double Dragon, yeesh, Street Fighter, yeesh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, just super yeesh, but there you go, uh, Mortal Kombat Legacy, um, all these ones are available, uh, if you are interested in, you know, purchasing them, or I'm really, I don't, I don't know, I used to say I'm looking for trades too, but I'm really trying to downsize the collection, over 6,000 moves, I got piles everywhere, I want to, you know, cut it in, you know, over half, uh, essentially it's hard to do and I've got rid of so many already but so many more that I want to get rid of so let me know if you're interested in any of these we can work out a deal uh, I wasn't even thinking about that initially when I made the previous uh, what did it make the shelf video but then I got a few people messaging me on Instagram so I was like why not sure these are all available um, I know I probably War of the Worlds would be the one that gets probably the most attention but uh let me know and uh, let me know if you've seen these movies and what you think of them even if you enjoy them I know Moneyball gets a ton of love and I know War of the Worlds does as well. And again, some of these ones I enjoyed. I was just getting rid of them because I have different editions or I want to upgrade like, you know, Roger Robert, The Revenant, Outsiders. Uh, can I have a, a duplicate for the 4K? Mad Max Fury Road and uh, Lonesome Dove. But 10 that I'm purging from the collection. And uh, I'm constantly going through the collection, you know, debating back and forth. Some of them, again, they're hard. I try to rationalize. I had, had a bit of an impasse. I'm like, oh, I like this scene, I like this ending, I like the movie, but I don't like the ending, I like the director, certain aspects here, uh, so I really gotta stop doing that, I gotta, you know, I, if I can't see myself rewatching again, it's gotta go, uh, and you can only rewatch so many movies in your lifetime, I don't want to have things just to have them, and I don't have the space, I don't have the room, I've got a, you know, a baby on the way, you gotta, I gotta make room for that too, um, this room, it's, my office area is gonna be a nursery, uh, and you know, I've got another room in there filled with bookcases so um it's time to get rid of way more and i haven't even really looked so much at my horror collection because horror is my favorite genre by far but there's definitely a few things that i can get rid of um so you know i'll, I'll be going through that as well too but look forward to more of these videos coming in the future it's kind of you know cathartic in a, in a way too to let go of it and uh, i can make some content on here as well and i was really surprised like you know a positive uh, feedback for the first one and I know this one's a bit longer so I'm sorry for that uh, I ramble and I talk a lot very verbose when it comes to something I'm passionate about I've been making videos on here for 14 years now mind-blowing um, so yeah I, I still love talking movies and collecting and I will continue to do so so these are what didn't make the shelf the 10 movies right here so uh, let me know your thoughts on them even if they're differing from my own uh, leave me those comments down below and I hope everybody's doing well take care